and prevent another civil bloody war. No, I don't believe, I, like I've said many times, I don't believe it's going to get violent. I don't. I think we're at that point in history that talks about the book of Daniel. It's all going to happen through empowerment, through knowledge. This is the hand of God working. God, if it was violent, then it would not have staying power. That's why it's failed miserably every time in the past. Every time there was a bloody revolt, bloody rebellion against the slaver class, because remember, that's what it comes down to. Let them eat bread. We got the slaves. We, 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 we enslaved them through violence. But it was expensive because you had to provide them with food and housing. Could you imagine if employers, if you want to have a full-time employer, employee, a servant, a worker, then you had to at first at least provide their, you know, adequate housing. Look at chalk up that expense as a master, as a boss, as an employer right now. In your town, in your locale. But you want you want to you know be a good boss and give them a generous standard of living, right? You want to be ethical. You want to treat others the way you want to be treated. We're a Christian nation, for God's sake. Look into what Abraham Lincoln was. He was a big Bible thumper. And don't you think the South should have surrendered one whole hell of a lot sooner, thus saving hundreds of thousands of lives? But they were fighting for their way of life and their they were fighting for their independence. We've heard that before, haven't we? We've screwed it up everywhere. Western influence. We've screwed it up everywhere. That 14 year old girls are allowed to get an abortion without even telling their parents. That's what I've heard. Maybe it's a rumor. Don't hold me to it. But I've heard that. Can you imagine that? That's America. A place where prostitution is legal. With a wink and a nod, we all know it's going on all over the place on the internet. Right? And guys, you think because you buy a prostitute, you think you're better than her? But think again. Think again, long and hard. No. We're all brothers and sisters. We're all sucked into this malaise, this degraded, decadent society. Sucked into it by evil men, godless men, men that are avowed atheists, then men that'll call themselves Christians or Muslims or Jews. They're beyond they they, they just they disregard, they don't fear God. So like King Solomon said, that's the beginning of wisdom, fearing God. It, you, you don't want to fall into the hands of an angry God that owns you and is gonna decide, determine where you your soul goes from here and if you have if you have forsaken your conscience essentially your soul that's like our umbilical cord to our soul our conscience and you, you know what, what are you going to get I don't know I mean it's anyone's guess but you know you can't keep God between a rock and a hard spot forever you can't let these evil men continue to bully the righteous and that is it. At the end of the day, that's what it is. It's bullying. It's saying it's okay for a certain segment of the population to have been born extravagantly wealthy. but And it's okay that a huge swath of the population is born poverty-stricken and needy all the time. And we've got to set up welfare programs that fail miserably, like Section 8 housing. That's only made the problem of unaffordable housing worse. Added to homelessness greatly and enrich the pockets of the fat cats. It's socialism. If that's socialism, that's not, though. I mean, good socialism is something at least that works. You could take that Section 8 money, that $50 billion a year, and do what they've done with food stamps. That pretty much works, right? I mean, you don't take that the food stamps and give it, well, what grocery store do you want to shop at? Well, say, I want to shop at a few different ones, maybe. You know, Right? You want to it make them compete for your food stamp dollar, maybe, right? That might work. So you got food, you got housing stamps, essentially. It's an idea. It can't get worse than it is. People living in mortal fear of homelessness, and they're busting their butts just 
scraping by and worried sick about paying the bills and you're okay with that those people are in your midst that bothers me in a visceral way man and i want it to and we should want to be bothered and troubled with other people's problems you don't run away from this crap you gotta confront it head on man we gotta deal with our issues here and get serious scripture talks about being sober-minded man what do you think we've pissed off god he's sorrowful you have a poignant shakespearean bittersweet existence already just with the organic crap we got to deal with from the original sin we're not even supposed to know when we're naked or not what a departure that alone is organically speaking that's something we all got to deal with we got all these i mean we got predators out there natural disasters it's too hot it's too cold every kind of disease and death we got to face we live with this crap day in and day out our shame the guilt from disobeying our parents is it's in our blood it's in our dna the death gene but no we got to contend with these freaking monsters that are controlling us via the purse strings Instead of saying, look, it's God's planet. Let's come together, kumbaya, and uh, smoke a peace pipe and say, hey, let's just be logical and simple-minded here. It's God's planet. We're God's equally beloved children. So what would you do if you were God? Now, be honest. That's all I ask is that you be honest. What would any parent do? Share it? Get along with each other? I want all of you safe and secure, free, prosperous, right? Isn't that what your parents would tell their children? Do you want them to act violently toward each other? See all the problems, homicides being committed for money, women selling their bodies for money? Is this what we want? Are we okay with, you're okay with this? Get, I should get comfortable with this? People living in mortal fear of homelessness? I should be okay with this? People driven to commit crimes? Because of desperate poverty, I should be okay with this world. Wars being, uh, being initiated for profit, where innocent men, women, and children are maimed and killed, I should be okay with this. I should shut the hell up. You know, the media, the mainstream media is so culpable. I mean, it's every bit as powerful propaganda when they don't report certain things, select things. They won't discuss. They just ignore them. That's powerful propaganda right there. It's just as powerful as when they, when they report it deceitfully with a slant that their boss comes from on high. It doesn't even have to be spoken. It's something they know that, that this is how I've got to report this thing. This, this is what I want the public to think, and I want to sway them in this direction to believe this thusly the way that we tell them to. And beliefs are powerful, man. They, you know, and you say you believe in this, you know, principles and things you would fight and die for, right? Your backbone. You think, man, you know, uh, this is like um, trusting in something. This is like having faith in something when you say you believe in it. But we bandy this term believe in this and believe in that around. But really what, you know, we should understand it's you believe such and such exists. Like somebody said, if they asked me if I believe in UFOs, I'd probably say, yeah. And, you know, right away, they're thinking at least, right, wackadoodle. But they don't understand that I'm interpreting what them to say as do you believe they exist, right? And most of us would agree that's well yeah that's fair enough it's not like you're saying i have faith in ufos or i trust in ufos i'm just saying i believe that this phenomenon has existed all through recorded history and it's documented so yes so all these a-hole politicians that don't want to talk about that subject make sure the mainstream media doesn't talk any more than they absolutely have to like when fox news had the pilots on that knew every single aircraft in our inventory. And they said, no, their minds were freaking blown. They were so excited. They said, oh, my God, 
this was a real craft caught on radar that went from one end of the horizon to the other in the blink of an eye, not even, wow. Well, Bob Lazar, the, the nuclear physicist specializing in propulsion systems, can explain it. I can't. But apparently they have their own gravitational field. And when you have your own gravitational field, you don't know when you're upside down, right side up, going a billion miles an hour or whatever. It's all the same. You can adjust any equipment on board to make it feel perfectly comfortable all the time, no matter what speed you're doing. No matter if you're doing whoop de doos okay? No, no matter what you're doing, you're always going to feel the same. Because you have, it's just like the Earth is spinning at over a thousand miles an hour. We don't feel it. There's no draft because of the atmosphere. But if you go up a hundred miles or so, you're going to feel a draft. That's why the rockets have to go in and out of space in a certain way. It's like getting on and off a freeway that you sure as hell don't want to go the wrong way against the current. You got to go with the flow, in other words, to m minimize the. Uh, the, the force, the heat that's generated by that sheer thousand mile an hour wind that change from going to from atmosphere to basically non-atmosphere space. So friends, what got America into these dire straits in my estimation is the long steady deterioration of our money. It's called currency debasement. And the way it happens is through market manipulation and collusion of different special interest groups that all have an interest in inflating this or that. And all they have to do is start with one thing that we can't get away from, like housing costs, right? Inflate that, and it causes a ripple effect, chain reaction, cause and effect. Do you understand? So everything else, everybody's scrambling. Well, my, it costs more to buy a house. It costs more to pay rent. So, you know, that's an essential human need. That's why it's so objectionable, unconscionable. They've picked on essential human need because they'd never get away with it. Well, the price for VCRs keeps going up. It's like, who gives a flying you-know-what, right? I'm just, you get what I'm saying? They know what they're doing. That's evil genius. That's where it comes in. When they got to control a huge swath of the population through the purse strings, money. Satan's ambrosia. We all love it for practical reason. God understands us, and if we confess it, he'll forgive us. But, you know, we got to remember, better men and women than us are suffering needlessly, sometimes dying out in the cold. I know that because Christ said, that's him. You want to know who I am on earth? Look to the homeless, desperate out there. That's me. So whatever you do or fail to do for the least of these, you do or fail to do for me. So put that in your pipe and smoke it, and then go enjoy your extravagant lifestyle. And call ourselves a Christian nation. And you think God, the wrath of God doesn't hang heavy over us? How? Does God be responsible for anything bad? Never. Never. But he can lift his hand of protection if he feels we're unworthy. As kids, his kids, we're supposed to be acting like a family brothers and sisters, the same way your parents would want you to behave toward each other. It's all very logical when it comes to understanding the very heart and mind, the mission of God on this earth is to reclaim it for the righteous and the meek. That's who's going to get it. And he's working, man. I know he's working. And the good news is that we're a lot closer than we were when I was a little kid. All the crap I've had to go through with the, watching the flatbed trucks loaded high, pile high with the bodies of dead, dead soldiers, young teenage boys, basically. Heaped high over there in Vietnam, black and white TV because we were poor. In 1965, I remember those images. That's PTSD right there. That's what I had to look forward to. I knew about the draft. I mean, little kids could be smart. At seven years old, I was smart. I was precocious. I was curious. I asked questions. That's, you think God, God's had to witness all this too. You think he's not at his wit's end? You want, what side you want to be on? You got a question?
the good guy. And the good guy always is God. And if you ask God for spirit of truth to come in your life, that's the very spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, whatever you want to call it, the comforter, the encourager, the counselor. You pray. The Holy Spirit's always there. It's God is omniscient, right? Everywhere at once. He knows everything. Really smart. Always available for everybody. There's no shortage of God. He, he, it's undepletable spirit of truth and goodness, righteousness, and holiness. Each and every good quality and characteristic we can tout, we learned it because of that nature of God, the character and personality of God. 